This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We are with Freightliner Trucks at Manifest, a logistics show, where they just unveiled the Freightliner Super Truck 2. Come along and let's get a walk through the powertrain technology, the electrical system technology, and see how they're pulling off an improvement in overall freight efficiency. Okay, so if you could just walk me through the powertrain on the Super Truck 2, Freightliner Super Truck 2, you got a lot of cool improvements here. Walk me through it, starting with the engine. How's this different from a typical DD13? Yeah, sounds good. So um, if we kind of start with a, just a powertrain strategy concept roadmap to start, you know, matching the engine to all the vehicle improvements, the driveline, where do we want this thing to operate? So we kind of start there. Um, you know, coming from Super Truck 1, where we had that hybrid system, we were able to downsize to 11 liter engine. You know, taking that away, now we need a little bit more displacement. So we settled on the 12.8 liter mm -hmm. for this project. But then beyond that, it's, you know, there's really no core components that we didn't optimize and purposely change okay. to get maximum efficiency. Um, so that kind of started, you know, Derek alluded to a couple of like the focus areas, and right. we would start with combustion. Right. Um, so, you know, combustion chamber itself, completely redesigned, purpose built. Um, piston heads and, and design there with um, you know, on the intake valves with um, flow swirl features sure. matching new injector new fuel injection system very high pressure um, it's a direct pressure common rail system so you know very high pressure match the shape of that to the piston bowl so it's like a true new combustion okay um, within that then also looking at you know thermal barrier coatings and um, you know heat management from that perspective as well which all made it in um, and then matching that combustion system to then the air handling system so really trying to kind of holistically design all of those things to really play together in like a perfect way so coming from the combustion then into the air side um, we, we settled on a twin so dual stage turbocharging so right two, okay. two turbos with then interstage cooling on right. that as well and then using that low temperature cooled cooling circuit to do a dual stage EGR cooling circuit as well. So okay. really trying to get that charge air, um, all of that pumping work outside of the combustion chamber, plus get it as cold as possible for volumetric efficiency gains. Right. And you're able to do that because I mean, this as an as an R and D project, you don't have to worry about production scale. You don't have to worry about sure. serviceability too much. You can kind of do, you can have two yeah. turbos to try to get as much efficiency out of it because that's the goal of kind of the R&D project that exactly. you've got going. Yep. Here. And then we get really deep into core components with like the whole oil management system. Oh, sure. Okay. Redesign a lot of different oil flow features. Um, with the 48 volt system, we're able to take the oil pump off and that's electrically driven now. So we're saving um, saving some mechanical work there um, and then using that now we can control that thing independently of, of the engine spinning so then there's some efficiency we can gain there right um, we even implemented some like active piston cooling jets and, and different features for the whole oil circuit um, and ultimately being pumped with like you know, super low viscosity right high high temp you know, high shear engine oil as well so you have a you have a detroit transmission overdrive here tell me how exactly. that's different so right? now we match that you know in that that whole combustion system that air system that whole calibration is now try to get it into as low engine operating speed as possible so now we want to set up the gear train so that over the road in cruise conditions we're you know we're sub a thousand rpm which mm -hmm. is really really exciting and so we we kind of start with a dt12 kind of our already you know base efficient direct drive transmission um and this this transmission is fundamentally that it's fundamentally like a 2.28 direct drive transmission in 12th gear but then using the planetary gear we're able to get a 13th gear that's right. now essentially an overdrive but because you're not using the counter shaft you don't have those losses so you almost have like a double direct drive from a mechanical efficiency perspective i see and then you know it has so we have a lot of efficiency improvements in driving that down speeding but then you can also slip back into 12th gear and you have a really comfortable you know ratio for just vehicle performance and grades and things like that so it's almost the best of both worlds right right yeah. uh and then that goes into this kind of cool six by four six by two situation Correct. you have going right, on right. here so can you explain that to me advanced tandem you know when, when we get up to speed and when in, in certain conditions we can then basically just leverage that rolling resistant gains on the on the back axle um, and start to shift load to that and or just not use it at all so okay. you could really you know i think that's the 
the big optimization over just our advanced tandem today I see. is that now you have a lot more levers to play with and you can really depending on what operating points you're in you can really take advantage of all the different concepts there i see because yeah the, you mentioned there's a clutch in there right yep. so it lets yep. you do that and that's all handled intelligently i'm assuming that's not anything the driver's having to manage yep, right correct okay yep. all intelligently and then you know we, we talked a lot about eco sale yep. the extension of eco role but you know that's all intelligently managed as well and a lot of this then you know the big picture gains on that too is when you get into the product or um, predictive space and now you know you can you can really optimize where and when you're using these different features in combination to, to maximize the benefit okay yeah it's being so eco sales the feature that shuts down the engine when it's like coasting down a hill right the engine yep. goes off kind yep. of autos yeah, exactly. so how are you managing that is that gps telematics data is that sensors on the truck all of the above okay yep yep basically using every every data input we have to to make that as intelligent as possible and, okay and a big enabler there too is you know the fully 48 volt system right so we've talked about a lot of different things that now leverage that from the oil pump to the starter now that 48 volt starter is really important now as you're using it more to restart the engine out of these events right um steering yeah steering. exactly okay. so now you know your eco eco sailing you know you need that starter but you need to be able to steer as well so right. getting that all out of the drivetrain you have an efficiency gain right but now you're also can can enable these other technologies right yeah going down to hill want to initiate a lane change you want yeah, your exactly. power steering to be yeah. there okay great can you okay so can you talk me through the 48 volt system so this is separate right this is in addition to the power that is going to the powertrain and all that, right? right. Yep, there's a separate 48 volt system, and um, that's really um, helped, you know, set up with this lithium ion battery system that we have. So we have a lithium ion battery that's got a lot larger capacity, in it, and that was sized somewhat to help with the hoteling features, as well as enable these other 48 volt systems, such as uh, we've got the electric power steering, right. uh, and we also have the um, electric AC system that, again, runs whether the engine is in eco sale mode or not um, when you're certainly in the whole park uh, HVAC system it does the same thing where right. it uh, it runs you never have to start the engine etc wow. okay. so uh, in addition like Jeff mentioned the other important piece here which I didn't really mention it's not necessarily a, a pure efficiency play but it's really you know a comfort etc it's this uh, 40 volt starting you, know, you got much higher speed and much higher power to start this thing um, you know etc and uh, so that's that's another feature we've added here that the 48 volt system sort of uh, enhances right well and we talked a little bit about earlier about how the decision between going to a full hybrid powertrain or bringing something like this on could you explain that a little bit? Because the, the super truck had some. The first super truck had some of those features. This one, it's the 48 volt system that's enabling the eco sale, right? Turning the engine off so you still have your systems. Why go that route? What was the benefit there? <laughs> right, and so again, the whole point of super truck two and, and super truck one were both on this long haul route. And so we've looked at you know what is a typical long haul route. There isn't a lot of stop and go traffic. You right. know, you're all at fairly constant speeds, uh, etc. And so super truck one put in a 360 volt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hybrid system with a much higher power motor, uh, larger batteries. Uh, you know, and what happens is when you start in this regen mode, you're generating lots of current, and you need to have a big battery or a, a very capable battery to absorb this current all at once. Um, and so, you know, the question comes in with all this larger battery, larger cables, larger motor, you know, bigger mass, mass, mass. Right. How much are you really gaining from that, especially right. on a long haul route? Now, there might be other routes where they make more sense, but sure. certainly on long haul, it doesn't make much sense. So Super Truck 2, we decided to look at a uh, smaller, you know, hybrid motor. And so ours is, uh, you know, a 48 volt system and it's about 30 kilowatt peak and, uh, and so we're trying to pull energy out uh, as much as we can um, and it's also functions as an alternator as well uh, it sits on the back of the transmission and, uh, and it charges the 48 volt system keeps the batteries charged and then of course there's a dc to dc converter that takes this 48 volt system and then you know enables all the 12 volt system whether it's you know cab lights all the other ECUs, et cetera, that's all still on the same 12-volt system on okay. uh, the truck tradition. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and how much of it, because, uh, you know, we talk about EcoSail and the intelligent powertrain management, how much of it is how much that has evolved since Super Truck 1? I mean, you know, telematics and the sensors and everything on the truck has come a long way since... I don't even remember the year now at this point, right? Well, Super Truck 1 was 2010 to about right. 2015. And, you know, we currently have an intelligent uh, cruise
regional uh, system. Right. Um, and, and this is just you know another enhancement to, to that system where we're pulling in some of these other aspects, whether it's eco sale, uh, hybrid management, you know, etc. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, guys.